In the near future, a calamity known as the ruin causes society to be reorganized. People don't have any sense of emotion anymore, they see all in black and white, lying is illegal, and medicine is used to repress any naughty desires. This is why babies are born through genetic engineering. Such reorganization has removed all pain and conflict to allow for peaceful coexistence, but it's also left people without individuality, since they're all one and the same. The city is surrounded by a mysterious mist and people are told there's nothing beyond it. A boy named Jonas rides his bicycle to the nurturing center with his best friends Fiona and Asher to do volunteer work with the newborn babies. The three of them have turned 18, which means soon they'll be assigned a place in the community. Fiona and Asher are excited about the upcoming ceremony, but Jonas is scared because he feels different and he doesn't know what path to pursue. Nobody knows this, but Jonas can sometimes see color, like the real shade of Fiona's hair. At the nurturing center, Jonas's assigned father is working with a newborn who is still uncertain, meaning he hasn't been assigned to their family unit yet. The baby suddenly starts crying so Fiona soothes him while Jonas's father says his name, which is Gabriel. Jonas is worried because knowing a newborn's name is illegal, but his father explains that hearing their name calms babies down. After a morning filled with volunteer work, the friends go to the park fountain and jump through the mini waterfall, which has become their little ritual. At that moment they make a promise, no matter what role they get assigned during the ceremony, they'll always be friends. The next day all the teenagers attend the ceremony, which is being hosted by the chief elder. First they say goodbye to the retired elders, who will be sent to a retirement home called elsewhere. Next, all newborns are assigned to their new families, and nine-year-olds are given a symbol of their responsibility. Eventually it's finally time for the teenagers to get their new roles in the community. Fiona becomes a nurturer, and Asher is chosen as a drone pilot. However when it's Jonah's turn, the elders skip him and he has to watch how literally every other teen gets a job except for him. When only Jonas is left on the stage, the elders make a special announcement. Because of Jonas' capacity to see beyond, he's been chosen to be the next receiver of memory. This means he'll get all the information about humanity's history so he can protect the community and advise the elders to avoid making the same mistakes. Jonas was left for the end because the elders had to think extra hard about their choice, they even say they can't afford another failure. After the ceremony is over, Jonas asks his mother what the elders meant by that, but his mother quickly changes the subject. Then Jonas goes to his room and activates a chip that teaches him more about his new role. He'll have to report to the current receiver for training, and after every training session he must immediately return to his house. All the details of this training must be kept secret. This role gives Jonas the privilege of many legal exceptions. He can ask any question and lie without being seen as rude, and aside from the daily anti-desire injection he mustn't take any medication, especially those that stop pain. The following day, Jonas puts on his new uniform, which makes him look different from everyone. He rides his bike to the edge and enters a lonely house where he meets the current receiver of memory. Since he'll be passing the memories to Jonas to be the new receiver, the old man says he's now the giver. The man explains that Jonas' training will be receiving humanity's history and learning to guide the elders, then makes him sit across from him. Jonas notices a mark on the giver's wrist which matches the one he has. The giver makes him move until they're as close as possible and takes Jonas' hands, causing him to start having visions. He suddenly feels cold and is shocked to see snow, which he never saw before. There's a sled nearby so he tries taking a ride, only to stop when he spots a house with a happy family singing a Christmas song. Before he can learn more, Jonas appears back in the giver's room. Apparently this is all for the first day, but the giver promises that there's much more to the world than people think. In the evening, the mother says there's something a little different about Jonas. At that moment the father comes home with Gabriel because the baby needs help to catch up on his development. Jonas notices Gabriel has the same mark on his wrist and can guess what will be his future. The next day, the giver announces they'll learn more about color. The giver shares that his first color was yellow, and Jonas tells him about the red of Fiona's hair. Then the giver sends Jonas into another memory, and this time he can see lots of wonderful colors in the sky. It seems this is the first time he gets to look at a sunset. When Jonas returns to reality, he's shocked to see colors in the room, although some of them are still a bit muted. It's explained that the elders decided to get rid of colors because it encouraged envy, but as Jonas advances with his training, he'll see more colors and in brighter tones. When Jonas looks out the window, he's surprised to see a wonderful tree among the mist and realizes that they were lied to about there being nothing beyond the mist. The following morning, Fiona finds Jonas laying on the grass and watching his surroundings. He's amazed by all the colors he can see now, but Fiona of course doesn't get it. The teens dare to hold hands only to be interrupted by Asher, who invites them to watch the drones fly. The group moves to the best viewing point and Asher shares that in his new job, he's seen elsewhere. It turns out it's just a few farms with houses, but he also saw two huge rocks that formed a triangle. Next, Fiona and Asher ask Jonas about his job, but since he isn't allowed to answer he wants to show them a trick. Not taking him seriously, Asher goes back to his own training, but Fiona follows Jonas' instructions. They grab some trays and sit on them, then they push themselves down from the viewing point into the grass as if they were on sleighs. 
Both teens laugh as Jonas helps Fiona to her feet, but the community radio reminds them that it's rude to touch people outside their family unit. Meanwhile the chief elder meets with the giver to discuss Jonas because he was caught almost sharing his training with his friends. However the giver says that this is inevitable and that he used to do it too when he was young. Angry, the chief elder tells the giver to behave, reminding him of what happened to the last receiver. Sometime later during another training session, the giver hands Jonas a bunch of books for him to read. During the process, a map falls out and Jonas sees it shows their world with a border around it called the boundary of memories. Jonas realizes that if a receiver crosses the boundary, then all the memories of the world would be set free. Then the giver takes him to the basement and reveals he has a piano, which fascinates Jonas because he never heard music before. The giver starts playing as he explains that the morning injections remove people's ability to feel emotions. When the giver grabs Jonas' hand, he has another vision. There's an old-timey wedding going on full of food, music, and dancing. People are clearly happy and feel connected with each other. Once he reappears in the real world, Jonas realizes he feels lots of new emotions like he never felt before. The next morning, Jonas tries teaching his sister how to dance, however their parents catch them red-handed and are disturbed by the activity. Suddenly they receive a hologram message from the chief elder, who is wondering if Jonas is being trained properly. Jonas assures her that he is and lies, saying he and the giver sit together and just talk. Then Jonas leaves for training but instead of taking the injection, he grabs an apple. Once he's gone, the chief elder asks the mother to keep a close eye on her son. Days pass and the giver continues to show Jonas all kinds of memories from the old world. Jonas gets to see how different people could be and learns about concepts like culture, art, and religion. He also learns about the animals that used to coexist with humans. The giver makes sure to touch every important historical milestone and Jonas slowly understands how the old world was richer and more complex. All this also helps him see better colors in his city. After a few weeks of training, the giver announces Jonas is finally ready to know pain. He grabs Jonas' hand and shares the memory of some poachers killing an elephant, which leaves Jonas crying for the first time when he returns to reality. The giver comforts him but also warns him that it'll get worse. That night, Jonas can't sleep and decides to comfort Gabriel instead, holding his wrist to show him some memories of animals. Gabriel sees it all, confirming he'll be a receiver in the future. Afterward Jonas watches Fiona at the window and as he falls asleep, he sees the two of them kissing. The next day Jonas tells the giver about this, expressing his confusion because that memory didn't happen. The giver explains that Jonas had his first dream, which is a combination of reality and fantasy. He also points out that Jonas is finally starting to feel love. Sometime later, Jonas goes bicycle riding with Fiona and can't stop thinking about the concept of love. She tries to ask him about his job, but this time he knows not to try anything weird and avoids the questions. Afterward at home, Jonas asks his family about love, but they just say it's an old concept that no longer has an application. After dinner, Jonas tucks Gabriel in and tells him that he loves him as he shares a few more happy memories. The next day, Jonas arrives at the giver's house only to find him on the floor. He immediately rushes to help him and the giver tries to stop him, but it's too late. A memory puts Jonas in the middle of a battlefield, and next to him there's a man bleeding to death. There is violence, blood, and death all over the place. Jonas then fires his gun, supposedly killing someone. Soon Jonas wakes up and he's horrified by all this pain, grief, and suffering he just experienced. The giver tries to explain Jonas wasn't supposed to see that yet and that this training is precisely done to prevent another war, but Jonas has taken too much and announces he can't do this anymore so he leaves. Watching him go reminds the giver of the time Rosemary left him too. As Jonas crosses the park, he realizes he can't just go back to his old self because he has all this knowledge that makes him see everything different. Asher notices he's acting weird and tries to check on him, but Jonas ignores him. However he does react when Fiona approaches him and admits he stopped taking his injections, he also confesses he wants to quit his job. Jonas encourages Fiona to stop taking the injections too and asks her to meet him tomorrow at the fountain. Later Jonas returns to the giver's house and finds him in the basement watching a memory of Rosemary and his younger self at the piano. The giver explains that Rosemary was his daughter and she was supposed to be the next receiver. However when he showed her a memory of a mother losing her child, it was too painful and she couldn't take it. The next day Rosemary told the elders that she quit and she was sent to elsewhere. Jonas thinks that living in elsewhere doesn't sound too bad, so the giver shows him a hologram with the truth. Jonas' father appears handling a pair of baby twins, only to take one into another room and inject the baby on the head. Because the society only accepts there can only be one of the same thing, twins are always separated and one is sent to elsewhere, which is just a metaphorical name for execution. This means the retired people who were sent to elsewhere are dead as well. Jonas is horrified by the baby's death, but his father doesn't appear to understand what's happening. The giver explains that humans don't grasp the concept of death because they've never been introduced to it. Furious, Jonas demands to know why nobody ever did anything about this, so the giver reminds him that people can't feel and therefore don't have any emotions to act on. Moments later, Jonas arrives at the fountain and finds Fiona feeling rather unwell. 
she confirms she didn't take the injection, so she's overwhelmed by all the new things she's feeling. Jonas holds her hands and kisses her, making her feel better and promising more wonderful things in their future. After Fiona leaves, Jonas finally remembers that he dreamed about her when he was a child and when he told his parents, they fixed it with an injection. Afterward Jonas goes home and notices Gabriel isn't there, so the mother explains that Gabriel failed the maturity test and will be released into elsewhere. Knowing the real meaning now, Jonas refuses to have dinner with his family and rushes to his room to pack a bag. Then he escapes through his window and rides away on his bicycle. Suddenly Jonas finds the way blocked by Asher, who reminds him leaving his home this late is illegal. Jonas tries to explain that there are more important things but Asher still grabs the bicycle to stop him, so as they fall, Jonas shocks Asher by punching him. Then Jonas manages to escape and goes to the giver's home to ask for his help. The giver is glad to see this rebel act and they make a plan together, Jonas will take Gabriel to the boundary of memories to release humanity's history while the giver stays to help guide people once all those memories come back. Meanwhile Jonas's mother hears what happened from Asher and reports the incident to the chief elder, who immediately makes a hologram call to the giver. Jonas hides just in time and the giver tells the chief elder he doesn't know where Jonas is. The chief elder can tell he's lying, but she can't force him to talk so instead she concentrates on tracking Jonas on the security cameras. Then the giver gives Jonas the map and as he says I love you, he shares some memories of revolutionary events to fill him with courage. In the city, a message is played announcing Jonas is a wanted man. Soon he makes it to the nurturing center, which is seen by the chief elder on the cameras and she sends her men after him. She also finds a recording of the kiss, which horrifies every elder in the room. In the nurturing center, Jonas convinces Fiona to take him to the restricted floor while explaining he'll be leaving the community for good. After they find Gabriel, Jonas asks Fiona to come with him, but she refuses to leave her family so she says goodbye with a kiss. At that moment the guards enter the building, so Jonas takes Gabriel through another door while Fiona takes an empty cradle and starts running, causing the men to follow her believing she has the baby. After a long chase, Fiona is surrounded and captured, but Jonas manages to escape by stealing a guard's bike. Unfortunately the guards soon catch on and start chasing him too. Jonas goes as fast as possible, crossing the city as he makes his way to the edge. The guards follow him there, but they immediately stop when they see him jump into the mist where they don't dare to follow. The chief elder receives a message saying Jonas was lost to the edge and the search is cancelled. Refusing to give up, the elders bring Asher and Fiona in for interrogation, and Fiona is given the injection again. After the chief elder finds the video of Jonas telling Fiona the plan, she and the guards arrest the giver by knocking him out. When the giver wakes up, he finds himself in a prison with Fiona. The chief elder holds a ceremony of loss for Jonas so people won't be surprised by his disappearance while at the same time she orders Asher to find Jonas and get rid of him. Meanwhile Jonas safely lands on a desert and is amazed to see nature outside the giver's memories, especially the warm light of the sun. He only stops riding at night to rest by the fire. Eventually the bike stops working, so Jonas continues traveling on foot while carrying Gabriel in his arms. At that moment Asher's drone friends him, so Jonas begs his friend for trust. Without a word, Asher starts chasing Jonas and Gabriel with his drone until it's close enough to pick them up. Asher guides the drone to the river and drops the boys in the water, hoping this will help them escape while still looking like they're dead. Once Asher sees the duo is okay, he takes the drone away and tells the chief elder that he's successfully finished his mission, which is the first lie he ever told. Minutes later Jonas and Gabriel leave the river to continue traveling under the harsh sun. Jonas thinks about Fiona to get strength to keep going. Speaking of Fiona, she's visited by Jonas's mother, who informs her she'll be sent to elsewhere. A desperate Fiona starts sharing all the wonderful things Jonas taught him, saying humanity has been robbed. Eventually Jonas and Gabriel leave the desert and make it to the snowy mountains. While dealing with the bitter cold, Jonas takes out the map and starts looking for a tower, but he can't see anything and passes out. Back to Fiona, she's taken to the chamber room where she'll be released, so the giver joins the watching elders and begs them to end this unnecessary drama. However the chief elder refuses, reminding the giver that love only brings jealousy, hate, and violence because people are weak and selfish. At that moment Jonas wakes up because Gabriel is crying. Buried in the snow, he finds a sled and remembers his first given memory, so he sits on it and the duo quickly slides down the hill. This helps them finally reach the tower that marks the boundary and as they cross the force field, all of humanity's memories are released just in time to stop his father from giving Fiona the lethal injection. As the city fills with color again, Jonas and Gabriel find the house from the memory and settle down to wait for Fiona. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.